opportunity in a few areas he says are prime for a catch-up trade. Let's bring in Sebastian Page of T. Rowe Price. So you're still a are you, are you still a self-described reluctant bear? Yes, Scott. And the bear part is still pretty obvious to me. You had a guest just talked about the inverted yield curve. That is a red flashing recession signal. But if you look at other signals like surveys on credit conditions or manufacturing PMIs, all these macro signals are flashing for a recession. And look, the equity risk premium is quite compressed. It's at a 20-year low. You've had a lot of guests talk about it just today. We know the regional small banks are fragile. Global growth is coming down. We've got some bad data out of China and on and on. The reason why I'm reluctant, Scott, is that a lot of those signals, and I've mentioned this to you before, represent normalization from very, very high growth, 10% nominal growth in 2021 and 9% in 2022. So a lot of these signals have been misleading. And we've had, you know, the most anticipated recession in history became the most delayed recession in history. So you have to approach all these data with nuances. And as you suggested, there are opportunities under the hood. Even know, though we're but, slightly underweight stocks, there are things right. you can do under the hood. But, but see, here's the issue is that, you know, you, you call yourself a bear. I, I, I get it. But you hear the same thing from the bears, right? They, they go down the list of the reasons why you should still be negative the market. Theoretically, they all make sense. The problem is the one signal, to use your word, that you didn't mention. And that's that the market just continues to go up. Now, I know we've had a, you know, a couple week pullback of sort of modest proportions. But the most important signal is that the market's going the other way than the bears thought it would. Yes, Scott. And, you know, I like to say the secret to happiness is low expectations. We started the year with very low expectations and we've had better outcomes than expected. I think the question becomes, what do you do if you miss the rally? And most people think of two options, right? I chase that momentum and, you know, we're valuation focused asset allocators. So for us, price is going up. Actually, all else being equal is more of a negative than a positive. Well, of course, uh, but of course. But, I mean, if you didn't that, like it, if you didn't like it, then I don't definitely don't expect you to like it now. Not not after the market's gone up a lot. I guess my right. point would be, at what point do you like it? But I'll tell you, there are things we like right now. At, at what point do we like it? I'm looking at a pullback in equities, a spike in the VIX, a little bit of panic in the market would be a better entry point. So first option is, you, you, you know, you chase the momentum. Second option, which is kind of what I'm describing, you just wait for the dip, right? And we've had a little bit of a dip, and we're probably due for a dip. But here's the third option, which is where we like leaning in, actually, is that all your guests are talking about this today and, and over the last several weeks. There are parts of the markets, as an asset allocator, that haven't participated. Scott, think about quality small caps, Let's start with U.S. large cap tech, right? 30 price earnings ratio. Compare that to quality small caps. 13 price earnings ratio. Compare that to the energy sector in equities. And by the way, all prices are up 20%. Is that a, is that a 12 price earnings ratio? Emerging markets equities at an 11 price earnings ratio. High yield bonds. Yes, spreads are compressed, but they're offering you 9% yield compared to 5% earnings yield on the top level S&P 500. So that's the reluctant part, uh, Scott. And we're actually long under the hood mm -hmm. those asset classes that haven't participated year to date, and we've been adding to date. You, you mentioned, you know, uh, you use the word panic um, in terms. It sounds like you're looking for, or you're waiting for some sort of larger sell-off to get excited about where things are. What do you think causes that? If it is to happen, is it all about the Fed being more aggressive than the market wants to believe that they possibly? you know, even could be? So I think the two key risks are, number one, yes, the Fed, and essentially inflation, because everyone's seeing inflation coming down, the numbers are good, and we're all extrapolating. The one-year break-even inflation's at 1.5%. To me, that's way too low. So that is a risk of, uh, you know, forcing the Fed's hand. And the other one is just basically earnings. Again, we have high expectations, and we are in a deceleration economically. 
So you balance these two risks. You look at the risks also in the commercial real estate sector. And again, sometimes I sound really pessimistic, Scott, but sometimes there, there, there's there, sometimes there's so many th there are so many things that can cause the market fragility right now. You know, because um, we also are dealing with very much slowing global growth. We're dealing, I mentioned commercial real estate, small regional banks all got downgraded. So there's all this fragility at the top level. And again, being valuation focused, you want to see stocks uh, go down. Just one clarification, though, we're invested, right? We're not like go all cash type of investors. We never do that because we have long term retirement oriented clients. So it's a balance between stocks and bonds and just being slightly underweight stocks waiting for the opportunity to overweight.